Chris Hagnagy, uh, welcome to Kuala Lumpur for Cybersecurity Asia 2023. Thank you. Uh, you did your keynote session yesterday and uh, you've also been with our Jessica Bainbridge, she's based in yeah. London, talking about uh, social manipulation, social engineering. Um, what are your sort of key messages for an audience here? You've got a book t uh, giveaway as well, <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of knowledge in there, but what's your general key uh, sort of takeaway from a conference like this, or key message to the audience? So in a conference where we're talking about cybersecurity, I like to focus on the fact that we're all human and that we're all vulnerable to social engineering attacks. And I'd like to focus on that because sometimes we do things like blame the human, like use phrases like there's no patch for human stupidity or that person must have been really dumb if they fell for that. So my message is, hey, we're all vulnerable, including myself, no matter what you do, the right pretext, the right time, you can fall victim to a social engineering attack. Well, I suppose in, in that context, uh, when we look at sort of the Ukraine, Russia, mm. uh, Russian uh, sort of influence on US elections and, and social misinformation, yeah. disinformation camp, campaigns. Do you think the two camps monitor and look at each other and, and learn from each other and it's hence why we might be sort of snowballing uh, into larger campaigns? Well, I think misinformation has been around since the beginning of human communication. Yep. But in the day and age that we're in where social media really runs our life, I think they are learning. They're looking at what's working in the fishing world, or maybe the fishing people are looking what's working in misinformation. Yeah. I mean, it just happened before I left. I think it was a day or two before I left. I saw a news article of how a, uh, a presidential candidate put out a video. He got caught because someone figured out there was AI editing. And when they questioned him about it, he didn't say, no, I didn't do it. He went, yeah, I did it, but that's because they did it first. That blew my mind. No longer people aren't, de they're not denying it. They're saying, yes, we, we do it. Yep. But they're just like, well, he did it, so I did it. I'm like, wow, the amount of misinformation out there is tr is truly mind-blowing. And do you think that's a, a danger, particularly on AI, ChatGPT, oh. and the sort of the power that this could potentially create in, in yeah. those hands? And yeah. sort of the, the analysis of, of population data and how people are re responding to these campaigns. Yeah. Are you seeing new new sort of applications for that? I, I do. I, I'm very worried about that because if you think about how quickly we have advanced with AI and if someone puts a video out of a, of a world leader, a presidential candidate or a president saying something and it hits social media, people just believe that. They just go, whoa, this happened. But what if it's fake? And what if it's something like an announcement of war? and now an opposing leader decides to launch first. I'm just like, I know that sounds like a sci-fi movie, but it's, we're not too far from that. When you think about the, when they do the demos, I think it was uh, in America, a company did a demo and they didn't even release the software because it was too powerful. And they had President Obama giving a speech that he never gave. And it was all AI generated. And they said like, we're not going to release this because of how scary it is. But they did the video anyway, which means every nation state on earth is probably targeting them to get that software. Yeah. That scares the daylights out of me. And one of the things you, you sort of raised is you did 90 million phishing emails. 19 That's million, right. yeah. Uh, how much of that is automated and then oh. again, uh, potentially overlaying AI tools over that? Yeah, so right now we don't use AI at all yep. and we don't automate any of it. So we write, like we do research on a target, we write a phishing email, we, we target that email to the company or the group or the person. Um, I think, though, we're getting to a point where I'm seeing uh, reports of AI being used by malicious groups for spell checking and grammar checking because they found that when an email reads really good English, yeah. even if it goes to a non-English speaker, it has a higher click ratio. So now that they're using AI to generate more quality out of their phishing emails, I don't think it's too far to start seeing AI being used to generate the emails. It's always been their Achilles heel, isn't yeah. it? Those spelling errors and the yep. like. And as you say, uh, using uh, AI tools to yeah. improve that or adapt to that language, uh, potentially even to adapting to voice uh, and video. Yeah, I think I think we're not that far, right? So there, there was uh, Microsoft put a tool out that all it needed was three seconds of your voice, and it could create a whole conversation in your voice. And it, in America, I'm not sure about globally, it was already used in what was called a kidnapping scam. Uh, a group of people called a mother, said they had her daughter in the background. She heard what she could swore sounded just like her daughter. They spoofed the daughter's cell phone number, said we're going to hurt her unless you give us money, and she transferred money over to them because it sounded real, it looked real, everything about it was real in her mind and she was trying to save her kid. So that's a real application of deep fake uh, technology yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously in your uh, field 
of social engineering, uh, it does create a, a whole new tool set. How do you think enterprises uh, grapple with this? What oh. are some of those key messages? Yeah. Is it simply awareness, uh, some training over the overlaying? Yeah, that? so right now, because there is no tool that you can use to say, oh, that's AI generated or that's a deep fake. There's nothing there that, that detects it. Um, there are some tells, but again, it would be someone analyzing video. It's not like, oh, you look at that and you go, hey, that's, a, that's an AI. Yeah. So right now it is awareness, and it's awareness about getting people to realize, hey, when I'm feeling a strong emotion, I may be getting manipulated. So here's the steps I need to take to avoid manipulative um, actions that will take me into a danger spot because I need to do these three things. Yeah. But it is uh, back fraud on a whole new level, yeah. uh, the way I would see it. <laughs> yeah. but, but look, uh, Chris, thank you very much. It was a very entertaining session thank yesterday. Uh, what is sort of key takeaways from Kuala Lumpur so far? Oh, I love this conference. It's my first time in an Asian security conference, right? And I was really excited because yesterday started off with a whole initiative on what they're trying to do to get Malaysia and APAC into a more security infrastructure, security conscious mindset. And I really hope they accomplish it because some of the things that were said would be leading other nations and how it's been done and learning maybe from failures in other countries. So I really hope they accomplish it. It's a, it's a very aggressive and progressive methodology. Beautiful. Well, thanks very much for joining us on My Security TV. Thank you.